Uh, right after I saw that, I finally understood what was fucking happening. But um, the dude gets into his car, which was parked right in front of 7-Eleven. Yeah. And you got to be a dumb motherfucker to rob a place. And park right in front and of it. And park right in front of it. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and she's like, get his license plate number. And I'm sitting there staring at his license plate, just memorizing it. And I'm fucking horrible with numbers. Go ahead. And then she went back inside. She tried to scrawl the... It was weird. Like, she she was so pissed at this guy that she took a, a pen out of her pocket. And she scratched his license plate into her arm after she told me to get it down. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm not a fucking part of this. And I didn't even understand what the fuck was happening because, you know, again, it's not commonplace. Right. And then she went inside and she was like, oh, God, I didn't get his fucking license plate down. Um, and she, like, she was scratching so hard that it was, like, blood coming out of her arm. Jesus fuck. And uh, I was like, yeah, it's MGK6. And she was like, oh, I was writing so fast, I didn't. I was like, dude, you were fucking scratching so fast that I don't even think ink was coming out. That might be blood right there. She has a tattoo now I of have that never, guy's license plate. Dude, every other word out of her like mouth was, was fuck him and fuck this and fuck that douchebag and fuck this cocksucker. And it was so funny because there were, as she was fighting, there was a line <laughs> forming at the register for people trying to bite donuts. Just imagine, though, like, you can't be next. I mean, I'm I'm not going to say everyone in those jobs is miserable, but I can imagine a lot of those people are. Yo, I'm s- and then that shit fucking on top of everything, that that guy became the the uh, justified release for all of her fucking pent-up rage working at that place. That guy was just the fucking, like, it, it was perfect. It was a perfect outlet. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm never in San the Diego. storm. I'm rarely in San Diego, so I can only imagine how often that place is robbed when I'm not there. It's being <laughs> robbed right now, probably. Did you say this was a 7-Eleven, by the way? Yeah. Why? I saying, because yesterday I was in a 7 we were in a 7-Eleven, you and me, actually, and uh, the other day, and you and me, you're just saying I like 7-Elevens are like this relic from like 1990. Yeah. They, they stopped evolving They in smell the same from my yeah. childhood, which is interesting. Yeah. It smells like a mix of like the, I don't know if it's the Slurpee machine or something, but it they don't smells have arcade the cabinets same. anymore, but no, sadly. The one I had never did, but they had that little, ro- they had that rotating thing that had comic books in it towards the front. And they don't sell the comic they books They still anymore. feel modern anymore. No, they don't at all. Especially because they still smell antiquated. Well, we got fucking antiquated. We got uh, Wawa this way. We our fucking Wawa that was already better than 7-Eleven and they're like ah it's not good enough they fucking almost tear the thing to the ground and rebuild it in three weeks wow yeah so I don't know I guess out in California man it's fucking around the behemoth office there's like three 7-Eleven I was gonna say it's all 7-Eleven on the west coast yeah and they're decent too I mean they got Gatorade flavors I've never even heard about before well you know in in like Asia and stuff they have 7-Elevens everywhere too but like they got salsa in their little thing you can put it on your oh yeah it depends on where you're at that's the thing 7-Eleven Eleven caters to the demographic. So, like, when you're in Japan or if you're in, like, in Malaysia, they had 7-Elevens that had, like, curry like, saute sticks and shit that are on, like, the thing. If you're in Taiwan or, or in China and you go to a 7-Eleven, it's got, like, fish balls on a skewer or some shit like that. Like, it's always catering to whatever the community is. I'll tell you one thing. You can get a pizza at 7-Eleven for $5.99. Yeah, and you know what? That pizza? It's actually not bad. My, Shut up. My brother, I think... I don't believe you. You can get a slice of pizza at 7-Eleven for a dollar. Watch the comments. They're going to be like, you know what? You know it's what? not that bad. No, <laughs> You know dude. what? You, truthfully, I will take anyone, 7-Eleven anyone pizza. Anyone from Chicago or New York going to tell you to fuck yourself. They're going to tell you you don't know what good pizza tastes well, those like. Those guys are fucking assholes. First of all, deep dish pizza is more like lasagna. It's not even pizza. It's true. Argument over. No, 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 listen. New York, I, people from I New York, not, they not, bitch about pizza. I could go, if you're from New York and you live here, you're like, ow, oh, this isn't anything like New York pizza. I could drive up to New York, bring it back down, and you will still say, this isn't anything like New I'm York not even pizza. Clo- I'm not even close to a deep dish Chicago acolyte, dude. Fuck that shit. As far as I'm concerned, pizza is New York pizza or Italian pizza. Like, real, it's like dry, and it's it, it, not dry, like gross dry, but it's like a, a dry, like less saucy. It's crisp. It's a crisp. Yeah, yeah. It's you know crisp what? Crisp. I'm gonna even one up you. People who argue about whatever the best pizza is are just assholes. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if like, that's the only problem in your life about, is pizza. Yeah. yeah. How 
how good your pizza is yeah. to their pizza. You're and it's not even your asshole. pizza, it's just like your regions. Yeah. Like, it's interesting though, yeah. because like in Chicago, a lot of people, look, this is no diss to Chicago, except it is actually, but a lot of the, I, I don't know if it's because they don't have a whole lot of things to hold on to or whatever. I mean, Chicago is, is a wonderful, awesome city. That we got a, friends there. Well, and it's got a great history, especially like with like fucking crime lords and shit, dude. The, the, the thing is a, is a cesspool of history and amazing like dark, deep secrets. It's a great city. But to sit there and be like, oh yeah, th- I've never met anyone from Chicago, mm-hmm. right? Like from, from Chicago, not just living in Chicago, from Chicago, especially old school, mm-hmm. that does not sit around complaining about New York pizza. Yeah. That does not sit there and talk about how their Chicago pizza is the epitome of pizza. And it boggles me because in New York, New York people are just so like, eh, yeah, we're the best. And they don't say shit about it. They're just like, eh, we know it. Oh, you're from Chicago? And, and I'm not a New Yorker. But there's clearly a confidence level that I think says that speaks volumes about what you really think about your pizza. Because if you've got to sit there defending something that you have all day fucking long, guess what? Your shit's garbage. But if you're sitting there and you're just like, whatever, man, you can say whatever you want. We know we're the best. Almost- guess what? You're probably the best. You're almost talking with a little bit of a Chicago accent there a little bit. Yeah, it's garbage, Joe. Oh, I didn't... Sorry. No, no, sorry. I watch way too many of these, like, artisan videos and shit, and a lot of them are about pizza making. Yeah. There's these dudes in New York, they're, you know, this guy bought, like, five ovens in a row, and he hated all of them. He's like, I'm gonna go... He he flew over to Italy, had some dude build him an oven in Italy. Yeah. Flew... Not that, he ripped out his storefront so the thing would fit through the front fucking door, reassembled it, and he was finally, yeah, and he rebuilt his storefront, and he was finally happy. He's like, finally, I have an oven that'll cook my bread, cheese, and sauce pizzas the way I Dude, want. Dude, you know, we talk about how crazy that is, but then look at Japan. How would that work? Look at sushi. Sushi's what? Rice, seaweed, and fish, right? <coughs> or or not, yeah. even, not even seaweed all the time. That's, that, 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 that's a roll, right? So, but even that, like the idea of rice and fish. How fucking complicated is that? But it is. It's infinitely complicated. And the people that mm. love it, or at least are artisans of it, mm. dude, I mean, the, the process and the ingredients, as simple as they may seem, are ultimately, like, the determined... Like, they are world-shattering factors to those guys. Yeah, and if they, I know a lot of people listening have probably seen this, but there's a great documentary on Netflix. I, I dream... Uh, I, Giro, 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 Giro Dreams yeah, of Giro, Sushi Giro, or something, Giro, but yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That, that covers all the bases of, like, picking out the fish from the fish market... Yeah. The cuts right that rice. you do, the how you store the fish, the rice, the preparation, Ma- of the yeah, rice. Pre- massaging the meat for like an hour. Not only that, yeah. but what he allowed people to serve with his sushi. Oh, like, yeah. like one of them didn't have any alcohol. One of them didn't have any like any sake or beer. He was like, that just is not here. Yeah, he got. He, they almost like he got really like short with the guy. He's like, yeah, we don't do that here. We- oh yeah. Plus, the guy had to pay for a reservation that included no sushi. Mm. It was just like a thousand dollars just to be able to like fucking sit there, and that did not include any of the fucking food you were like get. Ten people. Yeah. The whole place. But there was a sister restaurant or something like that that was a little bit more, like, commercial. His son, yeah, his son ran an identical restaurant, a mirror version of his, where everything was in the opposite direction. Right. But he couldn't charge as much because... Right, the, uh, Like, the allure of his father was, right. like, what was demanding those prices. I did love... There were a lot of lessons in that movie that I loved. And I don't... I mean, the, the problem is, is that I can't necessarily... Uh, I can't necessarily attribute anything that I do to it, but the idea of like mastering one thing Mm -hmm. rather than like trying to do a whole bunch of stuff, he was just like, if you focus on one single thing, Mm -hmm. you can become a master of that. And like how his focus was all on that. And clearly none of us are fucking that, but you know. I did I did appreciate that lesson. I thought that the dedication part of it, I definitely agree. Oh yeah. Definitely, you know. yeah. Well that's just interesting. <laughs> other things. We're all jack of trade what what's it uh jack of all trades, yeah. but a master of none. Yeah. I mean I fucking love watching videos like that. It doesn't even matter. Like these dudes who Oh, make sushi or carve wood. Make or, a knife. Yeah. Exactly. Make the knife holder out of leather. It's like, I yeah. love stuff like that. I yeah. could just watch this all day. Yeah. There was um uh he used to be on the the Seattle Mariners, Ichiro. I think he's 
he's mm. moved on. But uh, yeah, he moved on a while ago, actually. But Japan's anyways, golden boy. Uh, him and th- th- there's been a couple of Japanese baseball players. But what what I loved back when he was part of um, the Mariners, he he did an interview at some point, and they talked about because he used to put his baseball bats in a humidifier, and uh, he would like wrap them in like this special cloth or something like that. that. Sounds like cheating. Yeah, and they were like. Why do you do all of this? I mean, like, what's the point? And then he had an analogy where he was talking about a chef and, like, his his wares, like his knives and his pants. And he was <clears> like, <throat> um, a chef cannot cook a delicious meal if his knives are not sharpened and his pans are not clean. The, the idea of perfection, like, the idea of from the very ground up, if you're going to execute something that you need to have, you need to be prepared. You need to be... Uh, efficient and you need to be you know what I mean like I, I just love there's a lot of truth there well no but I love the idea because even if it's not quote unquote true like somebody can just fucking grab any old bat and if they're a fucking great baseball player just smack the shit out of a ball the end but it was the idea that he had like this it gives him confidence in yeah the mentality exactly and it gives you fo- that focus that meditation that uh, that process you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To, to, like, execute on something. I think we all kind of come up with our own, like, thing. Like, the things that throw us off or the things that put us into the mood or into gear. But, yeah, with the Japanese, it was always so, like, elegant the way they fucking do shit that it was, like, I don't know. I, I always appreciate it. I think it. they're a little full of themselves. Hey, really? Maybe, no, no, no. no. Really? I don't know. I, hey, listen. Any imperialistic society, oh, because they're so you're, homogenous, you're that's like going like that with your art. You're like a samurai with your fucking uh, vector art. So yeah, there you go. Zooming in five thousand percent. Nobody's nobody's ever gonna fucking see this, but you. But it matters to you. <laughs> nobody can see my mistakes. Nobody yeah. can see them. <laughs> I get it. All right, all right. So Jeff, Jeff, I heard. To tell tell us what, something happened at the office recently. Something about tacos. Yeah, my fellow sleepy cabin fellow sleepy cabin members ate my tacos. So you got jacked by your by your uh, sleepy cabin guys. Yeah. Now, why would they eat your tacos? That doesn't seem like a very respectful thing to do. Well, Mick, you know when you when you get food at a restaurant, yeah, you get takeout and you put in a little takeout box. See, I never have that because I always eat my fucking shit like a pig. Well, I never have leftovers. I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat my whole lunch, Mick. We went to a Mexican restaurant. We got a large portion. I got four tacos. Okay. I couldn't. Yeah, that's pretty much what comes with the meal. Four tacos and can't order more or less. Okay. What restaurant did you go to? It was the one across from the hospital. The uh, I forget the name of it. Oh yeah, it's Senor Salsa. <laughs> Dude, it's, got, it's got the worst Senor fucking Salsa, name yeah. and the worst logo. <laughs> it's good oh, food though. My God. It's good food. Is it? I've never been there. Yeah. All right. Dude, the, in, the interior is decked out in Mexican everything more than uh, Mad Mexes. So, so, so you went to it. Mr. Tacos and then yeah. you got you got some tacos. Senor Salsa. In my <laughs> infinite kindness, I drove Spaz Kid and Shad Man to lunch. Oh my God, you drove them my to this restaurant? Infinite, yes. See, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, is when that you place first... still open? You want to get some tacos? Yes. Yeah, I would yeah. too. Yo. When you first said... No, that, seriously, let's go. I'd okay. be down Yes, okay. you know, I'm serious too. We'll but that. when you first said that your tacos were hijacked, my assumption was... Yeah. There just happened to be some random tacos in the Newgrounds fridge, and people were like, where did these come from? Oh, no, I no. guess we'll eat these. Oh, no. I had no idea that not only did they know where they came from, but that they were with you when you got them. So there was oh, yes. no debate... No. Whose they were, no. where they came from. Okay, oh, no, motherfuckers. No. All right. Yeah, no, I'm uh, by no, no, everybody, everybody, everybody at home is in the edge of their seat right now at this story. <laughs> but when you bring food home from the restaurant in your little take home box, you know, the assumption is you're going to eat them, yes. right? Yes, yes. I put them in the Newgrounds refrigerator. I'm like, they'll be safe here. This is an office. This is the office refrigerator. With respect. My food here is safe. Shadman, who is staying at the office because you guys had no power. He's so responsible. And Corey, who is working with us on the game because he, res- I believed he respected me. Yes. Enough to not do that, to not betray me like this. What kind of tacos was it? Oh man, they were delicious. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they were these. 
They're the carne asada tacos. Dude, they came with their own. Each one, each taco came with its own little lime slice. You see, see it's, it's little... almost as though, in my mind, you didn't not finish them because you couldn't. You wanted to savor them later. Oh, my God. You enjoyed them so much, you wanted to take your time What kind them? of fucking monster opens I... the fridge and sees food that's see, not there the second and I... eats it? The second I left that office to go take a nap because I was so tired from working so hard. So hard. I came back. And that driving night. them around. Yes. To, and all to you get wanted. Food. And all you wanted was your humble tacos that it was, you paid for. I came back. It was four in the morning. All I wanted were those two tacos. You've been thinking about it. That's what pretty much woke you up to get back to the office. I was hungry. Did they tired. have cheese in them. I don't. Yeah, I'm thinking a little bit. A little bit of cheese. Okay. But you know, it's four in the morning. Yeah. yeah sour cream. Mm, I don't. Here's the other thing. I don't think so. Where else could you get those? It's not like you could just be like, oh, they're gone. No problem. I'll this just go down to the some store and get some Wawa more. food at four in the morning. No, no. Like these, two... these were gourmet. They yes. were gorgeous. Yeah. You, were, you were hungering for them. So you go back to the office at four in the morning. So I open the refrigerator door and they're not there. Did, now, hold on, hold on. Did you, <laughs> the end. Did you, did you like, Double check. Were you like, wait a minute? I know that. Not only did I, not only that, I opened the door. I looked for five minutes. <laughs> I shut the door. I went back to my desk. I sat down. I said, you know what? No maybe, way. Maybe no I didn't way. look everywhere. No way. Yeah. They, I'm like, they have to be there. They have to be there. Yo, you want to call this episode "Fuck Shad and Corey? Yes. <laughs> I went back to the refrigerator. Dude, the refrigerator is not that much. You know, the thing is almost empty to begin with. There's like three cans of Coke and like some Chinese food box that's been there for three months. You're, like, just, you're just hoping they're going to materialize like, somewhere. You're yeah. like looking behind I'm the like, cans of Coke. Yeah, I'm like, maybe I just didn't look hard enough. I went and opened the door again and they still weren't there. I even, oh my God. And I hear this rustling behind me. And uh, Corey's passed out on the couch. He's like, eh. With taco sauce on and his he, mouth. He knew he knew what I was looking for. He's like, hey, Jeff, what are, the, are you looking for your tacos? I, oh. I'm like, yes. Uh, what do you know, Corey? Yeah. What do you know about this mystery? Yeah, sh- uh, Shadman. Uh, Aha, passing uh, the blame. Shadman ate them. Oh. And he fell back to sleep. So, so Shad ate them. Not exactly. Oh, wait a minute. There's more? Go he, on. He, he passed the, the buck. The plot thickened. He passed, so what, the, so what he really passed the buck to Shad hard. So wait a minute. He's like he's like that conniving friend who's like, Hey, Jeff, are you looking for the tacos? And you're like, why, yes. And he's like, oh, yeah. Shad ate those. And, you know, Shad Man's not a liar. So no, I, he's not. I trust his word. Yeah, so then what happens? Well, later, later you when Shad Man into his up, office, kick the door down. I said, you know, I need to, I need you to elaborate on this. What what exactly happened here? <laughs> He's like, ah, my friend Jeff. You know, <laughs> Wait, stop! Uh, this this whole story could fall apart immediately. Were they hard tacos or soft tacos? Soft. Tacos. Beautiful. Good. Thank Beautiful. You. Yeah, fridge soft tacos. Work, you know, like those hard, are totally hard tacos fine. Sort of. No, f- corn, corn tortillas, tortillas or flour totally tortillas. Fine. Wait, what? Corn tortillas or flour tortillas? They were flour. Yes. There you go. Perfect. But they were normal size. No, 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 no. Look, hard in a, in a refrigerator, garbage. Corn in a refrigerator, garbage. Flour, soft in a refrigerator, totally fine. This was a $15 Mexican taco meal, my yeah, friends. Yeah. Four tacos and a bowl of uh, refried beans. But anyway. Where, where, were, the, where <laughs> the beans gone to? I ate them at the restaurant. Oh, okay. But said, Shad Man, where, my, where the hell did my fucking tacos go, friend? <laughs> former friend. <laughs> ah, you know, I am very sorry. You know, I... There were subtitles in there? Yeah, I asked Corey. I asked Corey, what about, you know, and what about these tacos? Well, Jeff eat them, and Corey said, Jeff never eats his uh, takeout except for pizza. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Who made up these rules that I only eat my pizza leftovers and no other leftovers? That's bullshit. <laughs> I always eat my leftover. If I bring it home from the restaurant, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> Why put it in the fridge and otherwise? Said, and I had one, and he had one. <laughs> oh, Aha! Shared it. I, lo- I love how Corey kind of half woke up and was like, yeah, shat ate him. It's like, you motherfucker. So then what happened? Did you, did you approach Corey? That's when he smothered yeah. Corey with a pillow. I oh, said, that's Corey, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, Corey? He's like, oh, I'm Jeff, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, I was actually bitching him out over Twitter. I'm sending like all these messages to Corey over Twitter about him fucking eating my tacos. 
That's Johnny Utah <laughs> on Twitter. He, he was very apologetic. I forgave him, but, you know, I forgive those guys, but still. I felt, I've never felt <laughs> so betrayed. I'll tell you what, when I, op- when I couldn't find those tacos at four in the morning, I think I felt angrier, angrier for about two seconds than I haven't in five, two seconds where I was like, out of my mind with rage. I'm like, where are these fucking tacos? And then I calm down, and I'm like, all right, I'm calm. It's only, it's only, it's, this is not something to be mad about. But I swear, man. Take, take two guys to drive two guys to lunch, and they just fucking they stab me in the back. Like that. But whatever. It's we'll amazing. get you some new tacos. All right, yeah, we're gonna, right, you, you know what? Speaking of, the same you know what, Jeff? Jeff, tonight. I got the solution. Yeah. Look, we love Corey. We love Shad. Oh, of course. They're great guys. I forgive them, yes. We forgive them. And on top of that, <clears throat> right now, we're, we're going to go get some more tacos. Let's go get those tacos back. Without them. Let's go get those tacos. Okay. Do you mean like cutting their guts open and pulling shit out? Or no, you, you the fuck. Restaurant? God, oh. you're such a fucking gangster. No. We're going to go to the... We're going to go to Senor... When you say get them back, it's very clear <laughs> what you mean. We're going to go back... To Mr. Tacos, and we're gonna get some of those. Senor Salsa! <laughs> Senor Salsa, fucking hair, burrito, whatever the, the fuck it's just like is. a bright orange building in the middle of all these like classical, like, uh, nothing on nothing on the entire street is anything but like white or It's like, so metal. tacky. It's like a white guy clearly <laughs> owns the place and it's like, what should we call it? Uh, Senor Salsa, I guess. So fuck neither it. of you have been in there yet. I haven't. Nope. It's super decked out. Dude, fuck this podcast. It's cool, Let's though. go fucking get some tacos. Even the, even the tables are painted, are individually painted murals on each every single table. That's they that's put in attention. effort. They put in effort. That's care. That's a stamper thing to do. Yeah, anyway, should we just say fuck this and just go eat? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, fuck this. All right, hey guys, thanks for joining us. Don't, fuck you. Don't thank them. Whatever. <laughs> Who cares? I love you. <laughs> That was Senior Treachery Agua Edition. Join us next time on Sleepy Cast. Does anyone know the best and safest way to remove your penis from the mouth of an empty soda can? I'm asking for a friend of mine. It's stuck and bleeding really bad. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Goodbye. This is a sleepy cast lost episode. Suicide cooking fun time. Featuring Psychic Pebbles, Johnny Utah, and Spaz Kid. My name is Captain Dickhead. Later in the show I share my recipe for roasted human breasts and potatoes in pee pee sauce. Stay tuned. Let's go down to the real meat potatoes, Jeff. Something's been something's been peeping you. The real meat something's potatoes. Been, something's been really peeping Jeff. Jeff calls me every day. Hey. He just says I'm peeved. When we talk about like meat Guess. and potatoes, like the term meat and potatoes. Uh huh. I never Why? really figured potatoes like go go with like a meat product. It's like yeah, well, you do like a baked potato and a steak. What plant do you live on? Everybody like a baked potato eats. and a steak, or or, no, it's, no, it's or mashed potatoes and turkey, or it's meat usually potatoes. Like, yeah, meat, or cut up potatoes in a chicken. Meat potatoes. But they're meat like, potatoes. they're not things like, they go together, yes, but they're not things like, you know, a pita, potatoes like the pita biggest pot, or no. like <laughs> butter and bread. Like, it's like, you know. I mean, you could like argue that. it's like the biggest side Every dish. Every time we go to Outback Steakhouse, it's always like, we like a, ma- we like a potato. Mashed potato pot. or a baked potato. It's kind of like norm, though, to get like a potato product with your main dish. So it's like, you know, like well, baked potato, potato or french fries. Potato, pota- yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like, potato is the biggest side dish for meat, besides like vegetables, but those are fucking... Who gets it? Do maybe. vegetables? Do you like potatoes? Dude, is this guy talking dishing vegetables? Yeah. Dishing on vegetables? Vegetables could be okay. I like potatoes. I love vegetables. Me too. I have okay. frozen vegetables in the, in the freezer. Do I do? I cook them. Do frozen vegetables? I make them. What are you going getting fucking school lunches early today? <laughs> Damn, dude! I grilled asparagus earlier today. I have asparagus in my fridge. Let's cook it tonight. I actually, Fuck you, Jeff. I actually wanted to. Uh, Jeff, Jeff. Well, oh, to is that some doubt? Some is asparagus making abilities? I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We should have asparagus. Wait, let's have asparagus. What do you think about zucchini? What do you think about zucchini? has to die. Can you, can you smell? Do you have bad smelling piss when you eat asparagus? Do you smell it? Yeah, apparently it's not good for you. It makes you piss rancid. It does. It makes your sperm taste well, right too. It, I don't know about that, but I've, uh, I've it, been told. Yeah, it does too, yeah. It makes you like, you're <laughs> like, what?
to smell your pee through your dick. Like, actually, like, it's that strong. It's like when you piss, it has that after, like... I'm I think, sure I think it's what the, I think it's I'm the not bubble. sure what chemical process. Uh, it, I'm not. I have to look this up on Wikipedia while your piss smells, but it definitely <laughs> is terror. It definitely noticeably. Terror. There's a couple things. Right? People say like, but there's also things that make it smell better. Like people say pineapple makes you sperm. Dude, it's strong. Like, it smells like fucking. It's as strong as like paint thinner. Do you think really guys strong. are? Do you, are there really considerate guys out there that are thinking? Well, I better make my make, better make my well, taste better. if you if you know you're gonna be maybe yeah, I can see it. Like, but that also requires like fucking planning. You feel like you're, like okay, some tonight girl gonna be me? eating that much of it? She's just like, well, it's like a full meal. I better taste. Yeah, better. yeah. I guess yeah. You gotta you gotta stock up. I don't know. Yeah, but like I said, it also have to require that you would know you're gonna get a blowjob later. Are you talking? You about have the, to plan it. The idea that um, if I <laughs> eat asparagus, this is gonna ruin my the smell of my. No, no, no. Well, that or like a guy's looking. Not even, not even not eating something bad, but like purposely eating something good to, to make it enhance the taste. So like oh, eating, eating like, a pineapple. Yeah, I'd like to see a study on that. Like yeah, I, I think I think it's a little bullshit. But hey, I could be totally wrong because I'm not a scientist. All right, we'll see. I'm not apparently, a apparently, like eating what is it like mussels or something increases like the is it no? It's like oysters makes you it has like the kind of stuff that puts off the things that make you you know a little horny when you like pheromones or whatever. Yeah, pheromones. Yeah. Like they, they eating that kind of stuff can help you get if you, you eat oyster, mood. if you eat an oyster, you get horny. So hey guys, if you if you want to treat your lady right, eat a fucking sh- eat a thing of oyster. nasty old slimy oysters, and you, you can Corey, get her in a sack. Yeah, Corey, you know Corey devours plates of uh, mussels. Mussels. Oh, dude, I was mussels. wondering why. Corey. Hey, you know what? I always wanted to fuck you. Now I know why. There's a problem with mussels though that I have. Like you can get good mussels, then you can get the kind of mussels where it's like you, you kind of feel bad that you're eating it because it's still very. I don't might eat a muscle if it's like you know a pea pot like it's tiny they, you almost feel like you're eating full yeah like, like full when I open organism. something up and it's like I'm, I'm fucking it's like, like a whole live animal yeah like I'm prying over yeah you like ripping over its jaws it, yeah, like I feel yeah. like it's like fucking shattering it's ligaments screaming. inside of its body <laughs> and then I see it's like still there and it's still beating heart I'm just like hey, I don't want to eat this one this is like the most traumatizing thing <laughs> you can do ever to an animal yeah you have to fucking break its jaws it's like in its like, home you're just like ripping dude. its roof off and eating it yeah I have a question about eating in general. I mean, I've been questioning this lately. There's a, there's a certain, like, uh, I don't know. You almost call it, like, a manliness to start eating certain things a certain way. Okay, well, I'm curious you take, you uh, all right, all right, let's say, let's take, let's say, using examples like steak. Steak. Chicken Steak's wings. Manly. Chicken, well, not, I'm really here. I'm waiting. Hold on a second. Let's say, okay. let's say, let's say, steak, chicken wings, and, uh, fish, and things. What do you think about eating... What do you think of people like like Corey and Mick who polish? It doesn't matter what's attached to the steak. Like we'll get into the bowl of your any dog. gristle, any kind of fat, oh, any kind that, of look, lim- tendons, ligaments. Like they just eat it all. They don't care. When, I, I I think it comes. I'm, I'm a bit picky when it comes to. That. I am too. I don't think I don't think that's wrong. I mean, look, I, I, fat and stuff. Like if I get like a piece of steak fat or something, or you know whatever. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not the kind of guy who's going down to the bone. You know, I'll eat the good parts. I might even eat a little bit of the good parts. I mean, I might eat something that's a little gross. I think it's how you were raised. Like for me, I was raised more in a sense where when I got a steak or when I got a chicken wings, I usually got like four or six of them, mm-hmm. and that's all I would get. So I would make do with what I had, and I kind of. Well, through the process of that, I would end up eating all of it so I could get more. At the same system. time, though, there was a point where, you know, like I said, yeah, maybe I'll eat like a little bit of the gross stuff just so I feel like, okay, I'm at least I'm whatever. There's still yeah. meat on every part of that. Like, there's still meat on the. Yeah, but it's, that, it's, like, it's, the, it, the, the, the ratio cartilage. goes up at that point. It's like 80% fucking cartilage and like 20% but it's meat. But still, like, it's still meat. Like, it, it's like when you eat it. The only thing I won't do, though, is that when you get like those crab legs, those like things that still have the, the arms and stuff connected mm. to it, I won't eat the. <laughs> like open fucking pore that like you know the leg is connected to oh the big yellow pore yeah because it, it looks like <laughs> the it looks like they fucking dipped it in the toilet and then threw it in the fucking buffet section what do you think of tendons when you go like I, I'm not you a go, fan. we go to the the uh, pho plate the Vietnamese place and they have a a pho bowl with and they pack it with tendon it's like their most quote unquote their quote pop, most popular dish what's tendon it's uh it's like the shit between uh it's like you're in between your bones, Look, basically. Do we eat that? Is that what I get in my um, uh, spicy? Well, it's kind of, 
It looks like gelatinous, it's, but kind of chewy. It's almost like strings. It's almost, almost like natural bodily gummy bears in a way. Ew, dude! But yeah. it's gross. It's, 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 I think it's yeah, gross. I'm not a fan. I know what you're talking about. I think it's a cultural that, thing. I, I'm not a. I, but they throw in huge chunks of it into the fat. I'm not a fan of a lot of fat. Like mm. for instance, when you eat a steak, there's kind of like a point where there's just too much fat. Like if half the fucking steak looks yeah. like yeah. it's. It's like if uh, on a scale, it's just like here's thirty percent meat and the other half is fat. That's disgusting. I can only but if it's like a, if you cook steak, a medium rare steak, and like the top corners are a little juicy, mm. like um, fat. A little bit of fat, all, all, all a little bit of fat. Like if it's a little, like if it's like a tiny, tiny piece. Well, it's piece. different too because like with chicken, it's like the first thing I want to eat is like <clears throat> fattening fucking like skin on the outside and stuff. Here, here's a controversial what statement. Do you mean? Skin on the outside. Like on a, a chicken, a rotisserie chicken, the skin is always like has oh, the like best like a, like a, hey, thing inside. Let's get racist. All right, let's get racist. Why do black people? Oh, here we go. Like, their steak's well done. Is this a joke? That's what or is I want to know. Or is this no, a, that's that's a real question? No, I'm serious. That's a real... Why do they go to Outback Steakhouse and they're like, I want a well done steak? Do they? And they ruin it. Yeah. I've never paid attention to them. Oh, well, Jeff, they want, some, they, want, they want something that's black and dark and Well, there's no, more, hurts. there's no more pink inside. Yeah, is that what it is? It's, it's like, like charred? They're like, they want to consume themselves. Borderline charred, dark inside. They're dark, <clears> crusted <throat> over beating hearts, desire more of it. They need they more they dark, <laughs> crusty... I think people who like well done and... and as they, as they call it, blue steaks 